when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I thank God for this opportunity to share in this annual session with our president. God has been good. God is good. God is merciful. And we have much to be thankful for. God bless you now. Praise God for our president, for all of the staff that makes all of these things wonderful while the pandemic is going on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. All give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. All we give him praise, glory, and honor for that which he has done, that which he is doing, and that which he will do in the future. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. I'm so thankful for God's grace and mercy. The mere fact that he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. And I want to say to President Smith, happy birthday and to the women i thank you for the open armness that you've received me with and i said thank god for all of it amen 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 This is Cynthia Perkins Smith, president of the Woman's Auxiliary National Baptist Convention. I greet you with Jesus joy. I am so excited that you are here as we witness our first virtual experience. I pray that God's blessings will be upon each and every one of you. We look forward to what God is going to do through us. I'm sure that you are excited too, because we do realize that we are living in virtual times, but certainly we serve a risen savior who is much alive today. Enjoy the sessions. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice. To worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, my soul love Jesus, my, my soul love.
I love to sing his praise. It sounds like music, music in my ear. It is the sweet, it is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, 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 I really love Jesus. It is the sweet, no other name. It is the sweetest name. Sweet, sweetest name I know. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, it is so sweet. I lift my hands to you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. It is so sweet. Oh, it is so sweet. The sweet. Let the church say yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 Lord. Ooh, it is sweet. It is the sweetest name. I love to call his name Jesus. It is the sweetest. It is the sweetest name. Oh, no. Jesus. Jesus. There is something about that name. It is the sweetest name. Hallelujah. I know. Our scripture today comes from Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise, King James. In MSG it says, God, pick up the pieces, put me back together again, you are my praise. I wanna give honor to Dr. Young and his cabinet, to Dr. Cynthia P. Smith and her cabinet for this awesome opportunity. In our scripture today, we find the prophet Jeremiah feeling broken, and crying out for healing and deliverance. Throughout his life, Jeremiah was faithful in sharing the word of God with the people of Israel. Although he faced many obstacles, rejection from the Israelites and ridicule from the king, but Jeremiah still trusted the promises of God. Like Jeremiah, we are called to be faithful, but too many times we are like the children of Israel. We no longer have God at the head or the center of our lives. And we have stopped praying and asking God for his guidance. People of God, for too long, we have been doing our own thing, going our own way and willfully disobeying God. Our relationship with God has become a religious routine of going through the motions, the ceremonies and the traditions. Our heart is not in worship, and in some cases, we're worshiping idol gods, like our children, our jobs, husband, money, homes, cars. 
but God has a way of getting our attention. Amen. Like the children of Israel, we have been so blessed that we become arrogant. If you think about it, time and time again, when the Israelites found themselves trying to pick up the pieces, when they were overwhelmed, outnumbered, and when they had no hope, God stepped in right on time. For the Israelites, God stepped in so many times, they believed God would always be there no matter what. After all, they were a chosen people and they had a long history of God prevailing in their lives. God prevailed when Moses led them out of Egypt. God sustained them for 40 years while in the wilderness. God prevailed when they crossed the Jordan River, when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. God was victorious. When they conquered the promised land, God prevailed when Gideon defeated the Midianites, Samson defeated the Philistines, Elijah defeated the prophet of Baal, David defeated Goliath, and when Jehoshaphat defeated the Ammonites. Yes, the children of Israel, like many of us today, started to take God's blessings for granted and had begun to feel privileged. But what do you do when God hasn't come through? How? Do you keep your faith when life seems to wear you down? Cry out like Jeremiah. What do you do when all that you hold dear is suddenly taken away? Lord, pick up the pieces. What do you do when you realize that the light at the end of the tunnel is really an oncoming freight train? Lord, put us back together again. There are times when God has to discipline his people, lovingly using a little pain to ingrain a lesson in our heads and in our hearts. For the children of Israel, it was captivity. My question for you today is what is your broken pieces situation? 2020 was supposed to be your year of vision, but you are blindsided by the darkness of this world and you don't see how you're gonna make it. The stay home, stay safe order has crowned you not only super mom 24 seven, but Benson, Nurse Julia, Florence, Chef Neely, Bookman, Mr. Clark, Jeffrey, and Dr. Bailey, to the point you've become fatigued and overwhelmed. You are just recovering from the stock market dive in 2008. And now the COVID 2020 dive is depleting what funds you had left. You and your husband have been so focused on your careers, building that empire. And now that you've been quarantined together, you realize you don't even have much in common. Class of 2020, you had your vision board made, you planned, you purchased, and you prepared for the most lit prom and graduation. But you found yourself disappointed, defeated, and depressed. For some, a recent call from the doctor that you've tested positive for the coronavirus. What do you do when God has turned his back on you? What do you do when you're in the midst of a pandemic, what do you do when you're broken? What do you do when God has hit the pause button to get our attention and change our focus? As humans, our flesh would have us to throw in the towel, judge those who are more broken, and even feel that we can actually take control and power over the situation. People of God, we have to stop playing church. Stop playing God. We simply don't qualify. We didn't create a world. We didn't die on the cross. And we didn't rise on the third day with all power in our hands. We need to surrender all. Our mind, our time, our hearts, our lives, our talent, even the White House, to the word and the will of God. Lord, heal our broken pieces. 
for God knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Know that for every failure, there is a victory. For every disappointment, there is a blessing. For every test, there is a testimony. For every storm, there is peace. For every devastation, there is a miracle. For every trial, there is a triumph. For every valley, there is a mountaintop. For every sin, there is a savior. And for every midnight, there is an early Sunday morning. And remember, midnight only lasts 60 seconds. While going through your brokenness, open your mind and your heart to the word and the will of God. Allow God to be God in your life, resting his hands, resting in his hands and walking in faith. Just take one step and I promise you, he will do the rest. Take each step with faith, walking with the power of God, not allowing the darkness of this world to break you. Difficult circumstances, don't let them derail you. False doctrine, don't let it deter you. The devil, don't allow him to dwell within you. When life knocks you down, get right back up, trusting God and walking by faith. Men and women of God, this is not, this is not just a weekend or Sunday walk. We're walking, praising all week long. Monday, meditating and walking. Tuesday, trusting, and I'm walking. Wednesday, worshiping and walking. Thursday, I'm thankful, and I'm walking. Just keep walking, because faith is a long walk in the same direction. Amen? It's storming in my life, but I'm walking. I see tears in your eyes, but keep walking. The devil is tempting us on every side. But we're walking, looking for a miracle and expecting the impossible. Many of God's miracles had an element of human participation. Before Jesus turned water into wine, the Jews had to fill the water pots. Before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he had to remove the stone. Before the blind man received sight, he had to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Before the woman with the issue of blood was healed, she had to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. While God is mending your broken pieces, walk knowing faith recognizes the power of God. He can do all things. Faith remembers the previous provisions of the Lord. If he did it before, he can surely do it again. Faith relies on the promises of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid. When the wicked and even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find not and the door shall be opened. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. God can and will heal your broken pieces. Walk by faith and put your hand in the master's hand. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, I still possess. Life is about who hands you put it in. See, a baseball bat in Dr. Young's hands is a strikeout, but in Barry Bond's hands, it's a home run. A golf club in Dr. Cuff's hands is a bogey, but in Tiger's hands, it's a master championship. A tennis racket in Dr. Smith's hands is love, but in Serena Williams' hands is 23 grand championships. Two fish and five loaves of bread in our hands is lunch, but in Jesus' hands, it's a miracle, for he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's my bright and morning star. He's a rock in a weary land. He's my joy and sorrow, my hope for tomorrow. He is. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he is my all in all. My question is, do you trust him to pick up your broken pieces? God bless you.
Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey's quick, for some, the journey's slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. To President Dr. Cynthia Smith, President Young and his cabinet, to all of you ladies, to our ministers, wives and widows, to our queen, to the president of the Wolverine State Convention, Dr. Manning, and to all of you, my sisters in Christ, we count it a privilege and a blessing to have this opportunity to even be alive, but even to be a witness for the Lord on this occasion. I thank you, Dr. Smith, for allowing me this opportunity to serve as a coordinator of the National Baptist Ministers' Wives and Widows. As I reflect back on the challenges that face us as ministers, wives, and widows, and that we are committed to continue to stand as a witness to keep the faith even in the midst of COVID-19. That we come together all unified, that we might support the work of the woman's auxiliary, that we might make contributions that will enhance the mission, education, and evangelism of the work of the ministry. As we come together, we meet, we send our communication as our means of raising funds is to have the Queen Contest. We thank God for the opportunity that we are committed even in the midst to keep striving, to keep doing. We have a representative even now as a Queen for 2021. We will call her the COVID Minister's Wives, Minister's Widows, Queen, because we are determined to make a financial, physical, spiritual contribution to the National Baptist Woman's Auxiliary as a group unified for the cause. But we do not know whose life that we might be able to touch because of our efforts. We are determined to keep the faith, to be a witness for Christ, even in the midst of these troubling, frustrating situations. But we know that if we keep the faith, that we can and will be successful. So I wanna to present to you today, our queen for 2021, Sister Gil Hilda Frieda Gilead of the Ohio Baptist General Convention. Reverend Samuel Watson is the president. She is the wife of her pastor, Reverend Otha Gilead, who is the pastor of the Shiloh Baptist Church. And we are grateful and appreciative 
She's under the direction of our Midwest region, Sister Michelle Jones, a woman's auxiliary president, Sister Jean Lark. So we are grateful and happy, and she's wearing her crown today, Sister Gilead, Frida Gilead. I want to thank all of you, ministers, wives, you receive your communications. We pray, hope, and trust that your heart would be so, that you will share your blessing with those others and mail your contributions to our Woman's Auxiliaries Office as on the letter that has been sent out to you, that you will respond as you always do, humbly serving the Lord and praising Him. We encourage you to join us as we become greater and bigger for the cause of Christ. God bless you and thank you. Grace and peace to each and every one of you, my father's children. It is truly good for us to be here. I'm Cassandra Kidd from Baptist General State Convention of Illinois. We thank God for our Women's Auxiliary President, Dr. Cynthia Smith, and our Convention President, Dr. Jerry Young. We are in continued prayer as they give leadership and navigate our convention through this pandemic. I've had the joy of attending the National Baptist Convention for many years, starting back when I was a young teenager. For the past six years, I've had the privilege of representing my state convention, Baptist General State Convention of Illinois, as the Woman's Auxiliary President. And what a blessing that has been. In addition to leading the women of my state, having them join me in supporting our national work, I've been blessed to partner with the greatest state women's presidents in the world. I remember attending my first annual session as state president in New Orleans, Louisiana. I entered the room that Monday afternoon and I must admit I was a bit nervous. I saw many faces that I'd recognized and people that I'd come to know over the years. But there was something different about coming to this convention at this particular time. I was there this time with a greater responsibility. As I walked down the aisle, I saw one face that I'd known and loved for many years. It was one of my convention's former Women's Auxiliary Presidents, Dr. Helene Wesley. The meeting hadn't started yet, so she had me sit down next to her. After telling me how proud she was of me, she encouraged my heart, gave me a few tips, and said, now go sit down front with the other state presidents. So I did as I was told and went down front with the other state presidents. Being the new kid on the block, I was welcomed with open arms, and because many of the presidents knew and had worked with my predecessors, Pearl Singleton, Rosa Cooper, again, Helene Wesley, and Beverly Thomas, I felt like they especially treated me like family. I felt so good, and I was ready to go to work. My how time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when we work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Time flies when we are steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. My, how time flies when we are committed to kingdom building. That was six years ago, and today I have co-laborers across the width and breadth of this country. My fellow Illinois president from United Baptist Convention, neighboring states, Indiana and Wisconsin, Ohio, Connecticut, Tennessee, Nevada, Maryland, Georgia, even in one of my favorite places to visit, the Bahamas. Many states have multiple women's presidents, like President Smith's state, Michigan. And who could ever forget Alabama? Those who have hosted our meetings have done so in grand fashion, leaving no stone unturned. All of our state women's presidents of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated are second to none. 
you have blessed my life as you have represented Christ, encouraging my heart with your wisdom, with your style, and with your grace. You are forever my sisters. I believe God has his hand on each of us and he continues to keep and guide us with his righteous right hand. While I'm grateful for this virtual gathering, I really miss seeing and fellowshipping with you this year. So I send each of you a virtual hug to hold you over until it's safe to physically hug. My prayer is that you and your family stay healthy, mentally, emotionally, physically, and most importantly, spiritually. Love, blessings, and stay safe.
Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, the 90th division of Psalm, verses 1 through 14. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and say, return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight, uh, but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are us asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and with it. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they're the four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. I've read for you Psalm, the 90th division of Psalm, Verses 1 through 14. Your presence, Lord, of our children this day. We give you thanks and praise for as your servant now mounts the pulpit to acknowledge your presence and what you would have her to say. Father God, I thank you because I know your eyes are upon her and you will give her the right words to say. You will deliver through her this evening. And Father God, as we stand here in your presence, we know that it is you in her vessel. She will speak what you will have her to say, a timely word for this congregation this afternoon. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. And even as we may have had situations that we cannot attend to, we know you are the God who is always present. You are the God yesterday, today, and forever, and you will continue to guide and protect. And so, Father God, as she opens her mouth to declare your word this evening, we know, God, that you will put suitable words in her mouth that will yield for everyone present, her family, and all who she must come in contact with, and all to whom she is delivering your word this afternoon. We just know that you give her a word, a word, a ready word, and we just give you thanks and praise because we know that she belongs to you, and you will not see her forsaken this afternoon. You will undergird her with your right hand, and if she even stumble, you will brush her off as you promise. And so, Father God, I give you the thanks and the praise for what you're doing in her life among these whom she must lead and shine for you. And so we give you all the thanks, the glory, and the honor for we ask these words in your precious name. And for your sake, we say amen and amen. And have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give God the glory and the honor. 
We praise him for all he's doing in our lives and we thank him for his goodness. John 3.16 gives us a glimpse into the nature of God. God is giving. God loved us, which resulted in an action. He gave his only begotten son. When we truly love, we move toward action. During this part of our worship service, we have the opportunity to give and to share, demonstrating our love for Christ and for the one he has given to lead the women in this time. She has been an excellent example and a blessing to this auxiliary, to women and girls in general. So we want to bless her with our monetary love gifts. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your continuous blessings. We offer these gifts with thankful hearts. As we give our gifts of monetary offering, we surrender our whole being to you to be a blessing, to be a help, Lord, may this offering help her to extend the work of your kingdom. Through this chosen vessel, we hope that she will be an encouragement as she continues to fulfill the anointing you have placed on her life. Give her strength and give her endurance. Bless her family as she goes and travels on this journey. And because of the gifts we give, I declare that an increase begins to surround the lives of those who give, an increase long-term. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. You can make your love offering checks payable to Cynthia P. Smith. Here are two convenient ways you can give. Number one, you can use your cash app, dollar sign, President Seven. Number two, you can mail it to President Cynthia P. Smith, care of the Women's Auxiliary National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, 555. Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R Avenue, Suite 2079, Detroit, Michigan, 48213. Thank you for giving. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I'll never I'll never know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond all my faults and he saw my needs. Amen. Shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know. Just why he came, he came, he came to love me so. Oh, yes, 
he looked beyond all, all my faults and saw my needs. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. I greet you this afternoon, National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated in the precious, magnificent, marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. President Jerry Young and staff, President Smith, Regional Vice President Suggs, Jones, Haynes, Housie, and Ferguson, all other staff of the Woman's Auxiliary, all sisters and brothers everywhere who share with us today, I am elated and honored to have the opportunity to present to this august body of believers, the president of the Woman's Auxiliary, Dr. Cynthia Perkins Smith, a proud native Alabamian. Steeped in learning, she received her early education in the Bessemer Alabama public school system, earned the Bachelor of Science degree from Miles College, Birmingham, Alabama, and continued studies 
at Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana. In 2019, the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters was bestowed upon Sister Cynthia from Arkansas Baptist College, Little Rock, Arkansas. She has taught in the Catholic and public school systems of Alabama and Michigan. Fortified in faith and humility, Dr. Smith served 13 years as president of the Michigan State Baptist Association Ministers' Wives and Widows and 10 years as president of the Woman's Auxiliary. She is serving her ninth year as president of BM&E State Convention of Michigan Women's Ministry, completed 20 years teaching ministers' wives in the National Congress of Christian Education, served more than a decade on the Oratorical Commission of the Congress, and in 2015 was appointed Midwest Region Vice President of this auxiliary. In January 2017, President Jerry Young appointed Dr. Cynthia Smith to the position of President of the Woman's Auxiliary for such a time as this. Sister Smith is a member of historic New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, under the leadership of her husband, Reverend Robert Smith, Jr. This humble, loyal, busy, kingdom business Christian is actively, actively involved in the various ministries of New Bethel. Children's, Christian education, women's and mission ministries. In 2007, she organized the Tuesday Hour of Power Bible Study Group. On Thursday, September 3rd, 2020, she initiated the first Zoom mission meeting, Hour of Power for this auxiliary. And was it powerful? Using our publication, The Mission, as our guide, more than 225 participants joined the meeting. To God be the glory. We thank Almighty God for this visionary leader. The expression of God's love is demonstrated in the person of President Dr. Smith. He has allowed her to travel near and far, including South Africa and Israel, representing him. She has received numerous well-deserved accolades and honors, which time does not permit me to enumerate today, but you may read more in her autobiography, Just Let Me Tell You. Our illustrious president has been privileged to speak in Nassau, Bahamas, Frankfurt, Germany, Brooklyn, New York, Houston, Texas, Raleigh, North Carolina, Shreveport, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas, 
and of course, Selma and Birmingham, Alabama. These are but a few of her engagements. And now, a body of faith, hope, and charity. Three, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Thousands of eyewitnesses can attest to the fact that we are truly blessed to have as president our sister Cynthia, who knows and loves God, who knows the benefits of prayer, who follows the Holy Spirit's lead, who is kind loving, caring, lovable, compassionate, committed, and dedicated. No fake news here. She is real. She's an encourager. She seeks to build up others as she is elevated. As her gifts make room for her, she includes others. The heart of her husband of 46 years, come December 23rd, Robert doth, doth safely trust in her. Grand grandchildren, Joshua, Austin, Grace, Lauren and Josiah love her dearly and she loves them. Her siblings, nieces, nephews, and all relatives, both Perkins and Smiths, are proud of her. So are Michigan and Alabama. Strength and honor are her clothing. Short in stature, giant in service. Please, wherever you are, receive now our servant leader president who celebrated her birthday yesterday as she comes with her fourth annual address. Pray for her, Dr. Cynthia Diane Perkins Smith, President of the National Baptist Convention USA Inc. Women's Auxiliary. Hear her now. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could even remove the mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a woman, I put away childish things. And now abideth faith, hope, 
and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Good afternoon. Today we honor our distinguished leader and convention president, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Young, First Lady, Sister Helen Young, the official board of this, the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, all auxiliary and ministry leaders, all pastors, preachers, delegates, and friends. I'm honored today to recognize also some Christian women of distinction who serve along with us in the Women's Auxiliary. Sister Maxine Abrams, Vice President at Large. I think even the birds in the trees know that we are both from the state of Alabama. Thank you, Vice President Abrams, for presenting me and being such a vital force of support to our ministry. Vice President, Sister Michelle Jones from the Midwest, Sister Nellie Suggs Northeast, Sister Agnes Haynes West, Dr. Gloria Ferguson from the Southeast, and our latest addition is Dr. Vernita A. Housey from the Southwest. We thank our God for all of the hardworking officers, coordinators, chairpersons, state presidents, district presidents, and local presidents who help carry the message of our Women's Auxiliary to areas many times we cannot personally touch. Let us never forget our six woman presidents. Dr. Hugh Dell Gatewood, who worked tirelessly to hold up the National Baptist Convention and its name and the work of the women. She knows that these little ladies these days who would love to be at the convention many times are not able to. Let us keep Dr. Gatewood and other faithful soldiers in our prayers. National Baptist women, I have concluded you are the best. Special thanks to the Michigan Baptist Fellowship, which includes Wolverine State Baptist Convention and BM&E State Convention of Michigan where I'm privileged to be serving my 10th year as women's ministry president. Thank you, President Manning, and my president, the Reverend Dr. Wallace Mills Jr. Your support has been second to none. My state vice presidents, Joanna Woods, Dorothy Hamilton, Aileen Anderson, and Linda Allen, have kept my arms lifted high as I continue to do the work of the National Baptist Convention. I can never say enough for my moderator, who is very supportive, along with my women's auxiliary president, my mo moderator, the Reverend Steve Bland, and my women's president, Reverend Patty Dexter, thank you for your love and thank you for your support. I also would like to thank my local president, Sister Cecilia Giles, who works hard and encourages the women of our mission to support their first lady and most of all, their sister. Thank you. Thank you office staff and support staff for all the hard work that you do all year long. Special thanks to Peggy Close, Nicolita Jeffrey, Sheila Van Pelt, Elaine Blocker, Reverend Vincent Drake, 
Cecilia Dawson, Paulette Henderson, Pamela Jackson, Deacon Newt Perkins, Kim Stroman, and Antoinette Wilson. I'm thankful to have a most supportive church family, the New Bethel Baptist Church of Detroit. You have never let me down. I cannot forget today my biological family. You have supported me and the work that I do. Thank you so much, family. Last but not least, to the best husband in the world, Robert Smith Jr. Thank you. I love you. And we're in this for life. I want to pause to thank another young lady who has been very instrumental in what you are experiencing today. None other than Sister Stacy Ben. Stacy, thank you for your unselfish talent you have offered to me and the women of the Woman's Auxiliary. Thank you so much. My stewardship, over the past year, we were not able to do all that we set out to do, but we did what we could. It has been our goal to maintain an all-inclusive ministry and encourage the women to utilize the each one, reach one approach. It is our desire to continue to increase our sisterhood. All women is important. All women are important. We launched our first Hour of Power Mission Study Hour on September 3rd, 2020. We had 299 women and men in attendance by way of Zoom. We are blessed to have the commitment of our editor, Dr. Karen Hayes Harris, and the writers of the Mission Quarterly to present the lessons by monthly. We will have one noon session and one evening session monthly. The mission quarterly continues to be a blessing to many. Please help us to continue by getting your subscription. Dr. Pauline Campbell, our former editor and campaign manager continues to plead, get your book. The National Baptist Woman magazine continues to herald the news, all of the news that the National Baptist women are doing, along with other pertinent information and updates. Thank you, Sister Paulette Henderson, for your labor. Through the collaborative efforts of 162 women, key women reported over $16,000 to the convention. Thank you ladies for answering my call. The Women's Auxiliary made sizable donations this year to the World Day of Prayer, Children's Defense Fund, Smile America, and the Arkansas Baptist College. All donations were acknowledged with thanksgiving. Our relationship with the Baptist World Alliance continues as we attend regular board meetings of the Baptist Women of North America, led by President Tanika Shepherd. Our NBC Women for All Seasons Conference will take place in May of 2021 at the Western Hotel, Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Please stay tuned for more information. National Baptist Convention family, please remember us when you pray. Nobody told us 
that the road would be easy. But I don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us now. It was in 1920, 100 years ago, that women gained the right to vote. But look at us now. The first woman of color, Kamala Harris, now a candidate for vice president, United States of America. Is there anything too hard for God? Oh no, there's nothing too hard for God. Let us not forget to vote and don't forget to be counted in the census. Paul writes in Philippians 1.21, to live is Christ and die is gain. Let us pause in remembrance of those who have gone from labor to reward. I thought today I would speak to you from the subject, the essential church in this season. The essential church in this season. Some would call this season the new normal. We hear it almost every day. Many have been held prisoners in their own homes. Guests have not been welcomed in our homes for their safety as well as our own. Our favorite restaurants and stores have been closed, leaving us to cook more and pleasure shop less. The love that we naturally express to one another with a hug or a kiss suddenly became a touch me not, a fist bump, a nod or a wave. Children are sheltered in their homes instead of running and playing outside as children do. Drive-by celebration seems to be the order of the day. Our children's education is in jeopardy at the hands of competitive politicians. We have left our loved ones at hospital emergency rooms in hopes of seeing them again. Customary home goings have become exclusive, limited seated and time services. All colors, ethnic groups, races, and religions are affected by this pandemic. We have zoomed from one part of the country and world to another daily. You don't have enough education or money or status to escape this life-threatening virus known as COVID-19. Throughout the course of this world-changing event called COVID-19, much has been said about essential. What is essential and what is not? This was the determinant of what would stay open and what would close. Stipulations were placed on the hours of operation and protocol during operation time. I was invited to a church in Jackson, Mississippi on the third Sunday in March, only to find out that the governor had mandated the churches would be closed. Church buildings and cathedrals across the country and around the world have been closed, but the real church has finally left the building. Too long have we, the church, spent our time crowning and massaging and saluting one another in the building. Too long have we in the building taken the center 
fundraising money and left the center on the street. Too long have we performed instead of proclaimed in the building. Many have made the church building their God. I have nothing against beautiful church buildings, beautiful sanctuaries, and the stained glass windows. But I too realize that he's coming back for a church, a church without spot or wrinkle. Sometimes we get so caught up with our church buildings, we forget about our real mission. It was Neil Morris who penned these words. You may build great cathedrals, large or small, you may build skyscrapers, grand and tall. You may conquer all the failures of your past, but only what you do for Christ will last. You may seek earthly power and fame. The world might be impressed by your great name. Soon the glories of this life will all be past, but it's only what you do for Christ that will last. Remember, it's only what you do for Christ that will last. Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted in the end. Only what you do for Christ will last. So I submit to you today that the church is not the building. We are the church. And now we are finally doing the real work of the church. It matters not how others classify you. Know and understand that you are the essential church. You are important. You are needed. You are God's vessel. The real church is now taking care of the seniors and the widows making sure that they are fed and checked on. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you looked after me. Prayers are now being offered like never before. Prayer circles are meeting weekly and some daily as we petition one who can make a difference. I found out that there is power in the name of Jesus. It was Pastor Carlos Williams back in January who told us about his experience with Lexa. I think we've all heard of Alexa. He came to know after several tries that Alexa didn't respond until he called Alexa's name. It's just something about the name of Jesus. It soothes all doubts and calms all fears. Have you called him today? Then when we pray, have faith to face it. I don't know what your it is, but I can tell you he's able. Being a Christian is no guarantee against the trials and tribulations of this world. My granddaddy would put it like this. Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? while others fight to win the prize 
and sail through bloody seas. Sure, I must fight if I will reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toils, endure the pain, supported by thy word. You are the only Bible that some will ever read. There was a man who went to a church wearing some holy blue jeans, a faded shirt, and a cowboy hat. The members were offended and went to the pastor complaining. The pastor had a talk with the man and asked him to go home and pray and ask God just what he should wear to church. The man returned to the church, but he was wearing the same thing. The pastor asked the man, didn't I tell you to pray and ask God for an answer? Ask him what you really should wear to church. The man answered, I did. And God said, he didn't know because he's never been here. We are busy majoring in minor things. Instead of worrying about clothes, what about a soul? Riots and protests are all over the land. Half of the people protesting probably don't even know why they are protesting. Young people and seasoned saints alike, we must be careful who we join ourselves with. Every crowd isn't for you. Every committee is not for you. Every microphone is not set for your voice. Yes, I agree that black lives matter, but what about black souls? I'm so glad that one day, my savior took my black soul, dipped it in red blood, and washed it white as snow. I'm sorry, Mr. Governor. I'm sorry, Mr. President. You can't shut this church down. You cannot limit my operations. Stimulus checks are all right. But I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I thank the Lord for dying for my sins, for dying for your sins, going to Calvary's cross, buried in a borrowed tomb, but rising early on Sunday morning for my sins and your sins. He made us an essential. I thank God today, I am an essential. I can't afford to close up or shut down on a God that has been so good to me. My hours are never abbreviated. I'm on a mission to win the world for Christ. For he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 To worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, my soul love Jesus, my my soul love. Love Jesus, my, my soul. Love Jesus, I will bless his name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his praise. It sounds like music, music in my ear. It is the sweet, it is the sweet. I know, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, oh, I really love Jesus. sweet no other name it is the sweetest name it is the sweet sweetest name i know oh thank you jesus Woo! it is so sweet I lift my hands to you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. It is so sweet. Oh, it is so sweet. The sweetest name. The sweetest name. I know. Let the church say yes. Yeah. It is the 
sweet. It is the sweetest name. I love to call his name Jesus. It is the sweetest. It is the sweetest name. Oh, no. Jesus. Jesus. There is something about that name. It is the sweetest name. Hallelujah, I know. Sisters beloved, what a joy to have celebrated Jesus with you for the last days. We are blessed now to close the 119th annual session of the Woman's Auxiliary National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. As you leave today, tell somebody about Jesus. It is our goal that each one will continue to reach one. Do know that I love you. We miss seeing many of you, all of you as a matter of fact. So as you go, continue to love. Know that I love you and God loves you even more. We now close the 119th annual session. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you. I love you.